Chapter Fifteen of the Science of Getting Rich by Valence D. Wattles. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Diana Meilinger. Chapter Fifteen: The Advancing Man. What I have said in the last chapter applies as well to the professional man and the wage earner as to the man who is engaged in mercantile business. No matter whether you are a physician, a teacher, or a clergyman, if you can give increase of life to others and make them sensible of the fact they will be attracted to you and you will get rich the physician who holds the vision of himself as a great and successful healer and who works toward the complete realization of that vision with faith and purpose as described in the former chapters will come into such close touch with the source of life that he will be phenomenally successful patients will come to him in throngs no one has a greater opportunity to carry into effect the teaching of this book than the practitioner of medicine it does not matter to which of the various schools he may belong, for the principle of healing is common to all of them, and may be reached by all alike. The advancing man in medicine, who holds to a clear mental image of himself as successful, and who obeys the laws of faith, purpose, and gratitude, will cure every curable case he undertakes, no matter what remedies he may use. In the field of religion, the word cries out for the clergyman who can teach his hearers the true science of abundant life. He who masters the details of the science of getting rich, together with allied sciences of being well, of being great, and of winning love, and who teaches these details from the pulpit, will never lack for a congregation. This is the gospel that the world needs. It will give increase of life, and men will hear it gladly, and will give liberal support to the man who brings it to them. What is now needed is the demonstration of science of life from the pulpit. We want preachers who can not only tell us how, but who in their own persons will show us how. We need the preacher who will himself be rich, healthy, great and beloved, to teach us how to attain these things, and when he comes he will find a numerous and loyal following. The same is true for the teacher who can inspire the children with the faith and purpose of the advancing life. He will never be out of a job, and any teacher who has this faith and purpose can give it to his pupils. He cannot help giving it to them, if it is a part of his own life and practice. What is true of the teacher, preacher and physician is true of the lawyer, dentist, real estate man, insurance agent, of everybody. The combined mental and personal action I have described is infallible. It cannot fail. Every man and woman who follows these instructions steadily, perseveringly and to the letter will get rich. The law of the increase of life is as mathematically certain in its operation as the law of gravitation. Getting rich is an exact science. The wage earner will find this as true of his case as of any of the others mentioned. Do not feel that you have no chance to get rich because you are working where there is no visible opportunity for advancement, where wages are small and the cost of living high. Form your clear mental vision of what you want and begin to act with faith and purpose. Do all the work you can do every day and do each piece of work in a perfectly successful manner. Put the power of success and the purpose to get rich into everything that you do. But do not do this merely with the idea of currying favor with your employer, in the hope that he or those above you will see your good work and advance you. It is not likely that they will do so. The man who is merely a good workman, filling his place to the very best of his ability, and satisfied with that, is valuable to his employer. And it is not to the employer's interest to promote him. He is worth more where he is. To secure advancement, something more is necessary than to be too large for your place. The man who is certain to advance is the one who is too big for his place, and who has a clear concept of what he wants to be, who knows that he can become what he wants to be, and who is determined to be what he wants to be. Do not try to more than fill your present place with a view of pleasing your employer. Do it with the idea of advancing yourself. Hold the faith and purpose of increase during work hours, after work hours, and before work hours. Hold it in such a way that every person who comes in contact with you, whether foreman, fellow workman, or social acquaintance, will feel the power of purpose radiating from you, so that everyone will get the sense of advancement and increase from you. Men will be attracted to you, and if there is no possibility for advancement in your present job, you will very soon see an opportunity to take another job. There is a power which never fails to present opportunity to the advancing man who is moving in obedience to law. God cannot help helping you if you act in a certain way. He 
must do so in order to help himself. There is nothing in your circumstances or the industrial situation that can keep you down. If you cannot get rich working for the Steel Trust, you can get rich on a 10-acre farm. And if you begin to move in a certain way, you will certainly escape from the clutches of the Steel Trust and get on to the farm or wherever else you wish to be. If a few thousands of its employees would enter upon the certain way, the Steel Trust would soon be in a bad plight. It would have to give its working men more opportunity or to go out of business. Nobody has to work for a trust. The trusts can keep men in so-called hopeless conditions only so long as there are men who are too ignorant to know of the science of getting rich, or too intellectually slothful to practice it. Begin this way of thinking and acting, and your faith and purpose will make you quick to see any opportunity to better your condition. Such opportunities will speedily come, for the Supreme, working in all, and working for you, will bring them before you. Do not wait for an opportunity to be all that you want to be. When an opportunity to be more than you are now is presented, and you feel impelled toward it, take it. It will be the first step toward a greater opportunity. There is no such thing possible in this universe as the lack of opportunities for the man who is living the advancing life. It is inherent in the constitution of the cosmos that all things shall be for him and work together for his good, and he must certainly get rich if he acts and thinks in the certain way. So let wage-earning men and women study this book with great care, and enter with confidence upon the course of action it prescribes. It will not fail. End of chapter 15